Oh, here you are. Report from city staff, uh, APD. Hello, Lieutenant Garcia. Good evening, Chair Pine, honorable board members. For the month of March, 911 received 43,220 calls for service. Internal cases for that month, internal affairs received eight. Four of those were investigated by internal affairs. Um, we administratively closed no cases. We had no cases mediated. Total internal cases completed for the month of March were 14. 12 of those were completed by internal affairs and two of those were completed by the area commands. Discipline imposed was one verbal counseling, two trainings, two verbal reprimand, two termination, five letters of reprimand, and six suspensions. The proposed SOP violations for those cases included officer's duties, conduct, domestic violence investi investigations, investigations of police personnel, use of force, reporting for duty, and emergency communications. We received 66 vehicle crashes. 21 of those are pending the safety review board. We closed 44 vehicle crashes. None of those were determined to be preventable. Pending cases for the month of March are six, and EIS alerts distributed last month were 35. Can I stand for any questions? I have a question. Um, I, in the two terminations, can you identify what issues were at, uh, at caused that? What, I don't mean details about the officers, but I mean what issues were they? What are the things that caused termination? So, Chair Fine, uh, one of them, I don't recall. One I know was related to untruthfulness. 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 I have a question. Integrity. In regards to the uh, 35 alerts distributed for the EIS, is that only field officers? Is that also sergeants and lieutenants? I'm not sure. So, Chair Fine, uh, Board Member Armijo, that includes all APD employees, okay. all ranks, both uh, sworn and non-sworn employees. Okay, thank you. Lieutenant, um, I, uh, it's pretty obvious to me there must be a typo here, but uh, there wasn't a tenfold increase in uh, calls for service from February to March, was there? I'm sorry, Dr. Reen, can you repeat okay, the question? Okay, I'm reading from the top of your report, and it shows there were only 4,166 in February and 43,000 in March. Oh, that's a typo. Dr. Reen, um, I believe that's an increase of 4,000 calls for service. Oh, okay, okay, 4, gotcha. 4,166 gotcha. to be exact. Okay. All right, and the other comment I have, and I seem to major in this, but 66 vehicle crashes. You're taking Leonard's question. Um, I mean, I have a friend who's in the insurance business, and the average vehicle crash claim is now north of $5,000. So let's assume that that's the, the reality. That's 350,000 taxpayer dollars uh, going out the window, and preventable or not preventable, can't we train our officers to be better drivers? That's Chair Fine, Dr. Ring. Um, our officers do take defensive driving courses. They have to have a city operator's permit and they have to complete frequent uh, defensive driving courses online. I, I have a question about frequency. So <clears throat> let's assume that these um, 66 vehicle crashes are 66 different officers. But over time, if, if you had a circumstance in which a, a, a specific officer was having crash after crash after crash, how do you handle that? Chair Fine, um, it is progressive discipline. So we have had officers in the past lose their take home vehicle privilege for a period of time. 
we've also had officers that I am familiar with receive a suspension for having multiple crashes. Okay. Well, um, it would be interesting to know what the data is on that, just to know uh, what that is, because it seems to me it's a high-risk driving job in the first place. Yes. Um, but then if it, what worries me is patterns of behavior and how do we check for that? How do we deal with that? And I don't know the answer. So um, it would be good to know. Yes, so. ma'am. Um, Major Tyler, did you, I'm sorry, Lieutenant Garcia, did you have anything else? No, Chair Fine, okay. thank you.